Let's talk now to Simon Calvert, who is from the Christian Institute, which was one of the charities that brought that case today. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon. Uh, your thoughts about what might happen now? Well, the government can't just go away and make changes on its own. The Supreme Court has said that the law that the Scottish government had brought in was a breach of human rights uh, and that it's uh, defective and that it cannot be brought into force. Um, they have to amend it. Uh, they have to bring in new legislation. Uh, and that legislation is going to have to look very different when it comes to the crucial issue of data sharing. The, the, the snooping powers that the Scottish Government wanted to give these named persons were, were terrifying and they've made this scheme hugely unpopular in Scotland and we've long argued that those powers were a breach of human rights and today the Supreme Court has said that we were right. Do you have a problem with the, with the starting point of the scheme, the fundamental principle that children sometimes need help, need protection? Nobody would disagree with that, of course not. And if this was just the way the government sometimes describes it as a single point of contact there for children and parents who want it, nobody's going to object to that. In fact, what parents do want, parents who are accessing lots of different services, they often do want a single point of contact, so they don't have to tell their story several times. But that is not what the Scottish Government legislated for. They legislated for somebody with a legal duty to monitor the well-being, not welfare, the well-being, which the government say is happiness, to monitor the happiness of every child in Scotland. And crucially, they gave them these powers to obtain data, not just on the children, but on their parents, and to share it with other agencies virtually at will. So we, we've been contacted by parents who found out that uh, behind their backs, named person pilot schemes have, have compiled 60 and 120 page dossiers on them and their children recording all kinds of trivial stuff like the fact that a child sucks its thumb. So this was never focused on, on welfare, on child protection, it was focused at a much lower level of basically ordinary family life. And Scottish parents don't want the government monitoring their ordinary family life, they don't want them talking about them behind their backs and the Supreme Court today has made sure that that will never happen. Is there scope for something more, more specific, more targeted? Some people argue that, that, that help um, should be focused on, on those families who, who really, really need it, on, on more vulnerable families, perhaps. Well, well, of course, absolutely. A universal scheme actually creates the huge problem that it undermines child protection. Because if you're monitoring every child and, and lots of trivial information is feeding up into the, into the system, then if you're a social worker whose job is... is child protection, instead of having 20 files on your desk, you may have 40 files on your desk. You know, if identifying vulnerable and at-risk children is like finding a needle in a haystack, the name person scheme will just make that haystack a lot bigger. So it's very counterproductive to child protection. Um, so I think a lot of people think that rather than spending tens of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money on the name person scheme, which is what the Scottish Government has done, a lot of people think that you could spend even a fraction of that money directly on things like social services and that you would do a lot more good. Simon Calvert from the Christian Institute, one of the charities that uh, brought this case today. Thank you very much.